Don't you stop, 'cause tonight it's on the line. Show me how you get on down. Close my eyes, take me for a ride. grid we're matt and christina and we're going to give you a full tour of our ram promaster van we decided to go with the ram promaster 2500 the 136 wheelbase that's the shortest wheelbase with the high roof and we really wanted the short wheelbase so that we could parallel park it while we're downtown uh, this vehicle is actually 10 inches shorter than my tacoma and um, it's very easy to parallel park uh, when you're in the city, it's also very maneuverable, has a nice tight turning radius, uh, and it's, it's uh, really a joy to drive. So getting the short wheelbase required us to make some concessions, and so we're going to show you what some of those concessions are and how we decided to deal with them. One of the concessions that we had to make with the short wheelbase is there isn't room in the short wheelbase model for us to have a kitchen and to have a banquette and a seat, you know, as a seating area and a dining area. So we had to think of ways to manage that uh, and get all the functionality that we wanted in an RV. And the way we decided to do that was to put swivels on the seats. First thing we did and then um, when you sit down in the seats um, our legs were hanging about eight inches off of the floor here so I built up a nice little platform there and down underneath the platform is where we store our shoes we can both sit here and then Christina found this amazing lagoon uh, table mount that swings out of the way to stow like this, it just stows right there, and it's nice and locked in, nice and solid. Uh, driving over these dirt roads and things, it's just very, um, no problem at all, it stows great. And then I can swing it out this way, we can push it over here, and now we've got another tabletop counter that we can use if we're prepping food. Two of us can work in here if we have to, although this is mostly a one butt kitchen because it's not very big on space. Um, and then we can also lower this table and it makes it nice and comfortable. We can both sit here, have our, have our dinner. We have, each have a place to sit. Christina does most of the video editing. So she can just pull this right over here. She can pull her table up here. She can actually lower it right down almost to her knees so that she has a nice keyboard height for working 
it's really very versatile. So the next concession that we had to make is in a van this short, we also don't have room for a shower. So the way we dealt with that was by building an outdoor shower. And we'll show you that in a little bit, but basically here it is. Voila, our shower. I'll show you the rest of that in a few minutes. The first thing that we do when we get to a camp is we need to level the van. So I've got a set of levelers right here that I have tied down with bungees and I can just pull these out. And we actually did that before we started filming. But if you take a look, I just set a level up on the countertop and then I figured out where I needed to add some levelers, set them up here, drove the van up onto it, and voila, we're level. So I'll show you some of the storage here. And first thing I'm going to do is pull out our stool. We have a nice little ladder. We're getting up into the van. And a lawn. <laughs> Sit up the lawn, it just kind of helps keep the dust down inside the van. And the dogs can lay out here on their bed. Our chairs can stow in here. It's really important when you're living the van life that you live comfortably. So we don't just have little camp chairs. We have a nice rocking chair and a nice lounge chair. Oh, this is the life. The water tank is right back here and it comes out goes in through the water pump and then comes out of the water pump, goes through this three-stage filter and then goes up and into the accumulator tank. The accumulator tank just uh, allows expansion room for, because I do have this hooked up to a water heater, the water heater heats the water, the water expands, pushes back on the cold water line and it needs some place to go. So that's why the accumulator tank. Very simple, heads out there to the water heater and then to the, uh, yeah, you can't see the water heater from there. But the water heater is right back there, way back in the corner, right behind <laughs> the bike in there. This box here is our propane locker. Uh, our propane sits in here. It's a 20 pound propane tank. This locker also has a hole in the bottom that is vented down through the bottom of the van. And it, this is sealed all the way around so that if for some reason the pressure relief valve on the top of the bottle um, gives way if we get to a high altitude or it gets really hot in the van for some reason, propane is heavier than air. So if it does that, it will just vent out through the bottom of the van instead of going into the van. Um, I also have up here, I have an on off switch for the water pump. So if I need to service that water pump or if we get low on water and uh, the pressure switch in there will run all the time if we, if we don't have any water in there to pressurize the system. So I can just turn it off with that switch. So up here, I have a light switch for this side. There's a light in the back there. To maximize our storage space, we set the bikes up uh, with with uh, fork mounts, and um, and we put them in in opposite directions. Uh, the easiest thing for us to do is to 
to uh, take the front wheels off, take the pedals off, and then on mine I have to take the uh, seat post out. On Christina's I can just lower the seat post. And then we put Christina's in first because the handlebars go to the back. Then I can move the bike back and forth as I need to to make space. And then I put the back end in first with my bike and lock the forks down. And then I can tie them together with bungee cords, uh, put the wheels in place with bungee cords. I've got my pump, seat, everything gets bungeed on here. And even my helmet just hangs right there from the handlebars. So I need to take a shower. Uh, the sun just went down behind this ridge here. It's cooling off a little bit, so I want to take a shower before it gets cold. So what we use for a shower curtain is a, literally a clothes rod that I used to have in my Tacoma um, that just stretches out from side to side. And uh, we just stretch it out and hang it on these hooks that I put on. And then we've got these heavy duty magnets and I can just put a magnet on here and pull this nice and tight. I put these magnets on here and I can pull this shower curtain nice and tight so when it blows in the wind it actually doesn't blow on me while I'm taking a shower. If you look down where my feet are, um, I've got this nice little teak mat that we can use to keep our feet out of the mud while we're showering and our shower is an instant hot water heater with a shower handle built in. Um, and so what I need to do here is I just open up this valve to supply water to the water heater. And this is already on. This is my uh, propane line. And the propane goes in here. And all I have to do is start the flow of water by pushing on this button and there, it's already hot. Instant hot water. So that's our shower. So we just close the shower curtains here and that makes sure that we don't get any water on the bed. On this opposite door, uh, we have hooks for the towels and they can dry there as well as hang there while we're showering and um, we can just access them right away. It's totally sweet. We have this nice big space. It's about five feet by three feet wide. Um, plenty of space, beautiful shower, and nice and warm. I'm gonna take a shower. Ah, so good. Okay, so we're gonna give you a tour of the kitchen, and we're gonna do that by cooking something. And uh, so before I start cooking, uh, the first thing I need to do is take these little holders off. So these are little anchors to keep things from plopping out of here, dropping out when we're driving. So I just take those and put them back here. And then I can access the oils, the soap, and the spices. And then we have to decide, what are we going to have for dinner? So I've actually already decided we're going to have a uh, basically an Indian curry uh, over rice, curry vegetables. And um, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have a jar of, of uh, this curry sauce that looks really good. I haven't tried this one yet. And um, so first thing I'm going to do is start the rice. So... I am going to need to put the rice on, so I'm going to open this up. I have this three burner uh, Atwood stove, and being a three burner stove uh, is awesome. 
I chose to get the one that didn't have the electric lighter on it, the, the piezoelectric lighter. And so I have to light this by hand, which is kind of a little bit of a pain. I think in retrospect, I would have gotten one that had the electric lighter. So down in our bottom drawer here, we have, um, on the right hand side, we have all our vegetables that don't need refrigeration. And then right next to it here, we have the refrigerator. And down here, I have stackable pots and pans. So I'm just going to pull out the small one to start with. And then in this drawer, I have a handle that comes with this mixed with this stacking set. So it works with the frying pan and with the saucepan. And I can just hook that up there. And voila! So in order to get water, I actually need to pull the cutting board off of the sink and I'll just put it down here. I have a nice little spot here next to the seat for it. And then Voila, I have a sink with hot and cold running water. And let that boil. <laughs> so while the rice is cooking, I'll go over some of the other features in the kitchen. So the first thing you'll notice is after I open the countertop, you can see a fabric back here. What this is is actually a welding cloth that is fireproof. I did that just to protect the countertop from the flames. The other thing we didn't show you is the, the rest of the cabinet. So down here where I have our nested pots and pans, um, we also have a bowl, some uh, cloths and things, uh, cutting boards and various our um, colander here that collapses which is a nice little detail and then coming up from there I've got my silverware and serving spoons knives which I got my cutting board out and I'm going to get this knife out as well since I'm going to be cutting some vegetables and our silverware can opener and things, and then other serving utensils, some spatulas and some wooden spoons, and a wire whisk, tongs, so, um, and then the top drawer um, has our dishcloths, um, odds and ends. It's kind of like the top drawer in your kitchen, right? Everybody always has a top drawer or a bottom drawer in their kitchen. <laughs> It tends to collect things. Uh, these tools I was using the other day and I had already put the toolkit away. So I put them in here. I need to put them back in the toolkit, which I'll do tomorrow. Okay. Um, right above the sink here is our, our, our light switches. So I've got under cabinet lighting, which is really handy. And then I have our main area living lights. Um, this little fan here is a gimbal fan that's adjustable in many different directions. It's a small 12 volt fan that uses almost no power. And when we have warm temperatures, it's really nice to just put this on. Uh, we can open up the windows, open up the overhead fan, and boy, we can get a lot of ventilation in here, even if it's quite warm out. We almost never need this though. And then our, our, Food storage is up here, and you'll notice when we open these up, it pretty much blocks the light. Uh, and because my eyesight is going, I have macular degeneration, and it's it's hard for me to see in dim light. So I rigged up some under cabinet or some in cabinet lighting. Um, so in this cabinet, you'll see we've got gin, and <laughs> we can we can put tall things in here bottle of wine, we've got some balsamic vinegar, we've got our dishes and bowls, cups, um, and supplements and 
tinctures and things back there. And then uh, in this one, we've got plenty of, we've got lots of food storage. It holds much more than you would think. So this refrigerator is basically a standard refrigerator door. It's got a shelf in there. It's got a little crisper down in the bottom. It has the freezer. And we've got space for tall things in the door, which is really nice. And, and again, it's a very small refrigerator, but it really seems to do what we need. We have a freezer in here. It's not a big freezer, but it works. Something I think I overlooked is... Um, this van doesn't really have any lighting over here where the seats are. And so I think I would have put uh, a couple of lights right up in here so that we would have some better lighting over the table. Over here is our carbon monoxide detector. Very important to have a carbon monoxide detector as well as a propane detector in your van. While the vegetables are cooking, they're sauteing a little bit here, all I'm going to do is add this sauce. It's a pre-made sauce uh, that we like to buy sometime. This is called Jeffrezi Curry, Indian Simmer Sauce. The other thing that we have in this van is this Max Air fan, and this is a wonderful fan. Um, right now it's open, it's on, you can't even hear it. It's got 10 speeds. Uh, the low speeds are very quiet. You can bring it all the way up to where it just really draws air. Um, extremely versatile. I'm cooking we're generating a lot of uh, vapor content in the van so having this van on is just enough to evacuate a lot of that moisture out of here and we don't get a lot of condensation on the windows. Lily really likes this fan. So this part of the tour we're going to show you the bed and the bed is a standard full-sized futon and we made it so that we we made the bed frame so that we could fit a standard sized bed in here. So we also added a window on either side. So we have a win window at our foot area that slides and opens for ventilation. And on the head side, which you can't see very well because of all the pillows, we also have a window. Currently we have a window covering over that window and that's what we use when it gets cold at night. It definitely helps keep the bed area a little bit warmer. I just used the Easy Cool that we use for the sound dampening in the rest of the van covered it with matching fabric to the fabric that we have in the drapes in the back. And then I put magnets all the way around the edge and there's magnets up around the window frame, kind of creating a window frame around the window. And so they just stick straight to that magnet. We also have really great storage right above the bed. Each one of us has our own really large cubby, which holds most of our clothes that we don't need to hang. And then there's a light so that once you open it up, you can light up the whole cupboard and really, it really makes it much easier to see inside the cupboard. So Matt has one and I have one on the other side. One of the other really nice features we have is that we each have a light above our spot in bed and we can flip it on right here which is super accessible. And then it's also on a dimmer. So that makes, you know, laying in bed and reading or watching a movie really comfortable. The other thing that we have is we have a phone charging station right here. And then we took the um, cargo holder off the back door and Matt installed it here. And it works perfectly for sliding our phones in here. Matt can put his glasses and everything's really accessible right 
within reach of the bed. We also have access to the heater controls right from bed, or I say should say Matt has control of the heater controls <laughs> right from bed. So what we found so far is that we don't need to run the heater all night. This van stays so warm, even in cold weather. But in the morning, it's nice to turn on the heater just to take the chill off the air. And we can do it right from here, right from bed, and then wait for it to warm up before we get out. The other thing we have access to right from bed is the switch to the Wii Boost, which is um, boosts our cell signal. And there's also an electrical outlet, so we can um, have a computer plugged in or our iPad or anything else that takes AC power right from there. We also have this really awesome closet that Matt built, and it allows us to hang up our clothes so that really takes the pressure off of our cubbies. We can hang a lot of our clothes in this closet. And it's big enough to actually hold my lap harp. So I've been able to bring my lap harp on this trip. Just below the clothes closet, we have the cupboard for the composting toilet. And this is really slick because the two doors just open like this. We pull out the composting toilet. We use it. There's toilet paper over here on the door so everything's handy and then when we're done we just slide it back in and close the doors and it's out of sight out of mind we put some special attention into the floor we're traveling with two dogs that shed and i sweep many many times a day and this floor is a marmoleum floor and it's also a really beautiful light color so it helps keep the van feeling lighter inside. So this marmoleum floor is a linseed product and it's considered to be very green. And it's used in areas where people are um, alert, have allergies or who are sensitive to chemicals. So it was a really good choice for us because we're trying to do this van as sustainably and as non-toxic as possible. A couple of other cool things is that um, we have access to the garage from this side. So I can open up these two draw doors and we keep the dog food in there and we keep our packs. The other cool thing is we have this little step. As you might have noticed, our bed is pretty darn high and we could jump into it, but it's a whole lot easier with a step. So Matt rigged this little step here that flips up, locks in place. We can step up into bed and then we can just step down and then you just push these little levers here and it goes back into place. Some people stopped by to check out our van. They had a really nice renter, uh, beautiful people. And, uh, and so we stopped and showed them around. They showed our, they showed us around their van. So now we'll finish this. So I got the bikes out. And, um, and I'll show you in here. This is my toolbox. And I'll just pull those out. You got a couple extension cords here. And then I can just pull the toolbox out like this. So in my toolbox, I have some just basic supplies. I've got a drill, driver drill. Um, and some drill bits. I've got, you know, tape measure, hammer, got a bunch of hand tools in here, um, some paracord, uh, some equipment in here. I've got things like, uh, like extra hooks, um, screws, things like that. And then under here, I've got a, a set of bits, driver bits of all different sizes, shapes. Uh, I've got some extra hinges, um, some hooks. As I said, we've got hooks that we can put on to hang some things, all that. So just basic, basic items. Um, then uh, over here is our freshwater tank. Uh, you can see the level in there. We filled it up yesterday. Um, so with taking shower, with, with me taking a shower, Christina doing a sponge bath last night, 
um, and washing dishes twice for two meals, cooking, uh, making rice, and all the things that we did, we've used about a third of that tank. On this side is our gray water tank, which now you can see that really well. And then back here is our, our hot water for the sink. And I'll just take this over here and show you. It's a Bosch water heater. Um, it's a two and a half gallon water heater. And it takes, it uh, keeps two and a half gallons hot at all times so we've got pretty much instant hot water heater right at the faucet so up on this shelf this is where we had the chairs and all that kind of thing that you saw and then down here I've got a couple of cabinets I built this one um, is right now open space we can put a lot of different things in there um, it'd be great for storing little uh, tonic water bottles or something like that and then we have our GoPro case here and the drone case and they fit in here nicely. Uh, just on the other side of this cabinet is uh, storage for our backpacks and our laundry bag. So we can just store our laundry up here. Even if we have this full of chairs, we can still put our laundry up in here. It works pretty well. Um, and then down here on this side, I showed you the water heater. And right under the water heater is our Propex uh, furnace Propex heater um, which is direct vent vents through the bottom of the van and then um, the heat actually comes out is ducted over to come out right underneath the um, sink and the toe kick so it keeps the floor warm this piece here I can put the floor levelers in there fits right in there also my little five pound propane tank fits right in there um, so that's kind of multi-use. There are a lot of things that we could store in there. And then this cabinet has, I've got a little collapsible five gallon water bucket. We can use that for mixing up more cocoa coir, which the cocoa coir uh, bags for emptying the composting toilet are up here. Um, I've got some extra bungees and things like that that fit up in here as well. And then on this, this last one, we've got our bike parts, our pedals, uh, and uh, you know pedal wrench um, I've also got uh, the adapter so that if we have uh, for shore power so that's basically the back end okay so in the back side of this cabinet this cabinet has a lower section in it that actually goes all the way the full length and so we can put our uh, our yoga mats are in there as well as our shower curtain this slides right in and then I've got my first aid kit here and then our 170 amp hour lithium ion battery and this is our collapsible water uh, hose that starts out at 8 feet and goes up to 25 feet when you put it under pressure which is great for filling the fresh water tank well, that's going to wrap it up for our van tour. But if you like this van tour, and if there's anything specific you want to know more about, like the toilet or the shower or any of the features inside the van, you can check out our playlist. We made an entire playlist of the entire van build, and we'll put the mm, link yeah. to that in the description down below. This is the end of our shakeout tour. And we did three weeks of traveling where we went to Yellowstone and the Tetons and a lot of other amazing places. And a link to that tour is also in the description below the video. So if you like the videos, uh, hit that subscribe button because that really helps our channel. And then ring that bell if you want to get notified every time we post a new video. Also, give us a thumbs up. And we hope we see you next time.